Welcome to another exciting show of City Scene. We have a really great show tonight. We, we have some returning guests uh, with some great food I'm very excited about mm -hmm. from the Greek Festival. And a really special new guest, Mr. Bob Evans, who does some spectacular marine mm -hmm. photography just off the coast here of Santa Barbara. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. And um, it's quite special be with the two of you here today. Thanks. I have no idea. I was actually looking at the website. Yes. Amazing stuff. Oh, thank I'm you. super excited to talk about it. Yeah. It's Let's, Marine is, Megatropolis, is that correct? Exactly. Awesome. And uh, it's very exciting to be down at the Oxnard Channel Islands Maritime Museum. It's actually one of the most beautiful museums I've seen. It really it's is. It's got oh, paintings it's nice. and models there. and the people are just super nice and it's uh, going to be up for quite a, I guess, till August the 27th okay. right. and on July the 17th I'm going to be giving a talk that I think is going to be very important for everyone in our community about what do we do with these structures that are sitting out here off our coastline that have been out here for 50 years. And 50 years. 50 years, wow. yeah. I had no idea they were And we're happened. talking about the oil, oil structures. platforms. Right. Oil, yeah. That's okay. kind of what you're specializing in. That's pretty cool. That is exciting. Um, so tell us, tell us a little bit about the oil rigs and, and how you even started all this and how you got started. I mean, what, what prompted you to start taking pictures of marine life on oil rigs? On oil rigs, exactly. Well, I pretty much uh, freelance as an underwater photographer since I was 16 and 17. I was inspired by the Jacques Cousteau. Mm, Our family, cool. <laughs> uh, we were only allowed to watch Walt Disney <laughs> and the world of Cousteau. Oh, cool. And, I remember those days. <laughs> you know, I, as a child, I was raised in Europe in the Mediterranean, and I looked. I had a little surf mat. I looked down at the kelp underwater, and I was fascinated with a life below the oceans. And I was very fortunate to be taught how to dive by pioneers Bob and Bill Maestro of Body Glove Dive and Surf oh. in Redondo Beach. I'm a fourth generation of Hermosa Beach. Wow. And I, uh, at 16 years old, I put a scuba tank on and uh, went underwater and, and saw all these fantastic things. And at that time, photography was new and taking pictures underwater was uh, a new experience. And so I worked all summer painting a house in Gardena to get the money to buy my first Nikonos camera, which was initially designed by Cousteau, was initially called the Calypso uh -huh. after his research vessel. And then Nikon camera bought the rights to the Calypso wow. and they called it Nikonos. And so we started <laughs> taking started taking black and white pictures because I couldn't afford color at the time, color film, and oh, then wow. went to El Camino College to go to film uh, school, film school there. And because at the time, I was actually one of those individuals that's good for trade arts. Mm. I had a difficult time with math and other issues, and I fell into photography and went to Brooks Institute for a summer course in underwater Fancy. photography out in that's high school. That's amazing. And or after junior college, El Camino, and decided that that's what I wanted to do. And I would go to churches and Lions Club and share slides of people with the stuff that we were seeing in the Redondo Beach Canyon. Okay. And then I started realizing that uh, there were artificial reefs right. off Redondo Beach. So it actually took the old red streetcar line and dumped them into the ocean. And so at that, after that time, Wait, they took streetcar lines and put them in. Yeah, the they, they, yeah, they, they created. I've heard of that. Yeah, interesting. And that was my first kind of exposure to something stuck on a sandy bottom. It would all this life would start hanging around it, and it was kind of a, a protective area for like a, a sanctuary where the marine life could come and grow and exist. And well, that was kind of where I became got my interest. I came up to Santa Barbara to go to Brooks Institute. Uh, and they gave me an honorary master's in photography because oh, of the work special. I was doing. And I was freelancing, selling pictures to Time Life and Geographic and, uh, and had my own boat. And our boat, uh, actually one of my roommates, uh, grandmother had taken care of Walt Disney and he ended <laughs> up with a lot of stock. So we put the stock up for the boat. And we oh were trying goodness. to be like Cousteau <laughs> with my friends, you know. Well, you emulate someone, you know. That's <laughs> like. It, I mean, how many people can say that we're yeah, trying to No, uh, uh, Cousteau just it's amazing. Did, back to yeah. this huge generation Absolutely. of people of exploration and excitement of going underwater and 
And uh, that's, we had the boat, we would go out to the islands mm -hmm. and take pictures and sell them to the magazines. And then one day, one of our good friends uh, that was a specimen collector said, hey, you guys should go take a look at some of these platforms off the coast. And from Santa Barbara out to the Channel Islands was a you know, couple hour boat trip out to islands and right, fuel. Right where there was a platform hill that, that was right off Summerland, mm -hmm. and it was basically a half hour motor boat down to the platform. So I uh, approached Chevron and met the first woman engineer who graduate woman. Yeah, Sweet. it was so crazy. When she <laughs> showed up her. on the platform, <laughs> they didn't have doors on the bathrooms. And so oh. because of because of her being on the rig, they actually had to put doors, uh, put doors on. on the bathroom. That's nice. That's great. And so Linda, <laughs> Linda was a, <laughs> had a good idea. Yeah. Linda, Linda was uh, really cool, and she uh, saw what we were doing, and she convinced the her bosses, these pretty hardcore oil, oil guys, mm -hmm. uh, to allow us to go out there with our boat and start taking pictures. And, and eventually we logged 850 dives oh my God. Uh, on the platforms. And uh, uh, I pretty much used our own money. That's why I always say I have clean hands. Right. I'm not being paid to say this. I believe in protecting marine life. Mm. Uh, I'm an environmentalist. And when I see something in the ocean, I want to protect it. And Jean-Michel Cousteau is one of my best friends. I've known it, the, the son of Jacques Cousteau. Oh, okay. He lives in Santa Barbara. Oh, and uh, he always says, you know, you, you, if you know about something, then you want to protect it. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of been his motto. And, and being he's one of my mentors, it's like I see this life on the platforms. And ironically, we proposed this exhibit to the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum okay. uh, five years ago. And just within the last year, Greg Gorga, the, the director, approached me with Emily, who's their exhibit designer, and said, we'd like to do an exhibit on these offshore platforms. Well, unbeknownst to me, this decommissioning just popped up within this last year. Mm, right, what okay. are we going to do with and, the, with with the, the rigs? It, and the four H's were pulled out uh, quite a few years ago, and I was so involved in my fin business, it just kind of happened really quickly. And I realized that was terrible. All the stuff that we photographed and studied for all those years just got pulled up, taken down to Long Beach and put into a landfill. Mm. And so I decided that oh this time goodness. around, we need to take a different approach. And the regulations that exist that when they signed the oil industry, signed the contracts out here, was when you're done with production, you pull everything out. And that would be okay if they didn't have the life on it, in my opinion. It would be, you know. And this... you guys did some amazing things on that. And I know we're running a little bit short, we're just going really fast. Um, I really want to get to these pictures. Can, okay. we, can we talk about your some pictures and sure. kind of what you They did are there? amazing. I saw them. Okay. They're, They're beautiful, great. these pictures that this you've done. This is a platform uh, Hondo. And ExxonMobil mm -hmm. gave me my first contract. That's they beautiful. heard about what we were doing, and they put uh, Hondo in 850 feet of water. It was the deepest structure at the time stuck in the oceans. And uh, DI Bolding, this PR guy from Exxon saw us and said, listen, I'd like you guys to go out there and document the life as it built up on the structure. Mm -hmm. So for three years. And that's what we're seeing right that's, here. Yeah, that's the, the upper part. We eventually designed our own camera systems. At that time, we didn't have GoPros. And I worked with Willard Baskin, a famous oceanographer from Scripps. And they were designed the lighting system. And I designed the uh, uh, housing. My family has a casting foundry in Los oh, Angeles. Okay. That's awesome. And so we uh, went out there. This picture here is quite amazing. This is the first time that aquaculture was kind of experimented with because the lower part of the structure is not being utilized. It's just the upper part where right. the drill part takes place. And so this was very historical that ARCO at the time allowed the, a company, California uh, Sea Farms, to be able to put in these that's me on the platform, on hookah, <laughs> and I think probably 21 or 22 at that range. That's great. That's awesome. This is Platform Hilda. 
This is the platform that was taken to the uh, Long Beach site. Those are large matrinium anemones. It's almost like a fairyland down there with all these large Magical anemones. Great. And those, those are, are actually beautiful. three to four feet in oh, size. Oh, wow. seriously? Wow. Oh, my the goodness. Size of these. Yeah, the starfish. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a starfish. I have never seen one I've ever. been around, like I said, thousands of dives That's, around the Channel Islands. They, That's beautiful. It's just a haven of very extremely large starfish. Those are great. Uh, we were the first to actually do the first biological control program with Linda Palmer, where we used starfish to actually clean the biofouling. When they put the platforms in, they didn't have any idea how much life was going to accumulate. Oh, absolutely and in, not. Yeah. And the structure of the platform around the matrix, you have all these little baby juvenile fish. They don't swim from some other place. They come along in the larvae, they get into the muscle and matrix, and they right grow. There. That's the size of a quarter, just to give you an idea of the hmm. size of that fish. Wow. That's, so beautiful. This is a California Garibaldi. Oh. That's on platform Hondo. That was like photographing a mosquito. Have you ever photographed a mosquito oh before? Oh, my goodness. It's going, <laughs> I'm going around my camera. I'm going, I'm going oh, my God, that there's a Garibaldi, a baby Garibaldi. It's like, oh, look yeah, at this. Wow. That's platform what? Hondo. That's the life. Uh, Real quick question. I, I want to ask you, because what's going to happen if they decommission? What's going to happen to the marine life that's on there? Well, I'm going to protect it. Okay. And okay. my philosophy is... Clean up all the oil stuff, be responsible. The oil industry does want to clean it up correctly. Nice. They don't want a problem later on down the road. And it looks like the best scenario is cut it off at 80 feet. That way it's not a navigation hazard. Mm. That way it's not a liability to the state of California. What's happened because of that uh, accident up at uh, Refugio, Benico went bankrupt. So you and I now own Platform Holly. It's okay. our responsibility. This has gone so fast. Uh, is there, we can go to the website, right? Yes. Bob Evans. Bob Evans and Photography. Photography. Bob Evans Photography. Photography. Get more information yeah. and, and what an incredible, incredible thing that you're doing. Well, thank we you really for this appreciate opportunity. And, and yeah. your passion. And your okay. talk is going to explain more about the decommissioning yeah, and that have kind of a thing. Correct. It's going to be so, a okay. future Look for it. our community. Okay. Thank you so much, Bob. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. And